Hi, I'm Jen Matthew Sadler. And I'm WIM Natasha Regan. Welcome to this, the seventh video in our series on Alpha Zero openings. This is the second video we're going to do on the Carlsbad pawn structure, the Queen's Gambit declined. Um, and we're following on from our previous video, looking at um, an aggressive plan for black to deal with this opening. We love alpha, uh, analyzing Alpha Zero games and also finding parallels with great historic players. Yeah, and um, so my uh, my childhood coach and friend, uh, Steve Giddings, uh, he found um, an, uh, an, uh, a composed game by Savieli Tartakova, so the, um, the great um, uh, Polish player and QGD specialist, actually, who uh, um, the, one of the major systems in the Queen's Gambit declined, uh, the Tartakova system, bears his name. Um, and it was a composed game that he composed in order to show how black should try and deal with the uh, the Carlsbad variation, the minority attack. Um, and it was quoted by the Australian writer uh, C.J. Purdy um, in an article um, entitled, um, very aptly, when um, attack is the best form of defence. And um, it's a great little game, um, not perfect by any means, but it's, um, it, of course, it's very entertaining. Um, but it also reminded us of, uh, of an Alpha Zero game and an Alpha Zero strategy. So, um, um, so we're going to fir first of all show you the, uh, the Tartakova game, and then afterwards another great Alpha Zero game in the Queen's Gambit declined Carlsbad structure. As a reminder, we're now going to show you um, a game, and it was a composed game by Tartakova. So uh, he designed this game um, in order to show the themes and to show how he thought black should play against the Queen's Gambit declined and Carlsbad structure. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a nice uh, a nice concept, and uh, it's a uh, it's a great little game. You can see he had uh, he definitely was having more fun with black than with white when he uh, when he composed it. So, um, as you can see through, um, you know, a, a slightly different move order, we again get our structure, which shows how important it is to understand these things, because it can, uh, you know, it can really happen from so many move orders. And um, uh, here we see something uh, reasonably similar. Black again playing knight h5 to uh, remove the pin. Um, the pawn h7 has been defended by the knight on f8, a very typical way of, uh, of playing. Takes, queen takes b4 and g5 wow this is a different pawn break um we saw before in the last two games the pawn coming to h5 yeah this is a bit less um, um impressive to be honest i mean um the point about the um the march of the h pawn is that um it does have a a, a, a spot on h3 that's only protected by one other white pawn um if the black pawn and moves to g3, it's attacking a, a square that's protected by two white pawns. So it means you're really going to have to sacrifice something if you want to break through with a g4 to g3 break. But okay, um, that's, um, that's, uh, that's, that's fine. Um, so this is a, a sensible move actually from white, um, just to uh, sort off light squared bishops, uh, highlight the weakness of that, um, of that f5 square after g5. But here we are, Tartakova now starts to bring the pieces across. So those knights are gathering, and actually, well, you can just imagine uh, some pieces are starting to head towards the uh, the king side now. Um, I'm not quite sure about the move knight b6, to be honest. Um, knight's not doing a great deal there. Um, king h8. No, it's not coming around to h6, but we are freeing freeing the g file for the rooks, and look where they're going. King h1 and rook g7. What a lineup! So. Um, um, it also shows, you know, quite quite a nice little um, uh, t typical sort of scenario in which um, Black's queen side is collapsing completely. So, I mean, these three pawns are basically doomed. But, you know, Black does have a, a huge amount of uh, of power on the king side. I think what Tartakova wanted to show was, you know, if Black manages to do this, then he really does have threats. You know, it's it's not just that uh, the white's uh, king side is so solid that nothing can happen. And, uh, ah, this is a great, uh, this is a great little move. G3. Um, and uh, there are all sorts of ideas, like, for example, if I play f takes g3, then um, queen takes g3, and um, h takes g3 um, would be met by, uh, by knight takes g3, and knight takes e2, and g2 is hanging. Very, very nice. 
So f4 was uh, was uh, uh, Tartakova's line. Queen f5, h3, and then queen takes h3. Nice. Lovely. G8, g2. Taking with a knight, under promoting oh. with check. But this is a composed game, remember? <laughs> Indeed. Rook f1, rook g2, and we follow off with a mate. Nice. So that was uh, task. I can really imagine. Uh, you know, it was uh, it was very nice to receive this game, and uh, yeah, it does make you think of Alpha Zero when you've seen you know so much about some of the Alpha Zero games. Um, but this idea of playing this G four to G three, um, we also saw it in our previous video. I mean, take a look at that one if you haven't seen it yet. Um, and it was uh, the game that um, um, the Rooks Pawn Symphony that inspired the Dutch amateur Wim van der Weyck to play um, a very similar and very beautiful strategy. Um, and in that game, Vim played a very quick g4 to g3, and he um, he wondered whether it was correct. Well, take a look at this game um, from Alpha Zero, and this was a, um, a game that uh, nearly made it into the book, as always. But um, well, uh, we uh, we thought we'd had enough about the uh, the Carlsbad variation, so we uh, we didn't uh, use it in the end. But it is an absolutely gorgeous game. So let's have a little look. Just going to bring up the game. And that is this one. Here we are. Stockfish Alpha Zero. So we've seen this uh, a number of times already. Alpha Zero has got its standard strategy of swapping off the uh, the dark squared bishops. Um, Stockfish tends to put the knight onto e2 rather than f3. Um, and here rook b1, uh, Stockfish going directly for the minority attack with uh, with b4. So alpha 0 stops it this time with a5, and then this move knight a4. And um, quite a clever move, actually. I mean, the knight is offside, that is true, but it's uh, targeting the, uh, the b6 square, which has been weakened by this a7 to a5. So... Um, um, Alpha Zero has got its its pretty standard way of, um, of of playing on the king side, and this is actually a very classical plan. Um, the knight comes back to g7, and then later this bishop will be able to come to uh, to f5, supported by the knight on g7. Um, h3, just um, a uh, a consolidating move. Rook a7. It's all quite uh, quite cagey at the moment. The rooks getting out of the uh, attack by knight b6. So black's just anticipating uh, b4 from white later. And uh, stockfish making sure that all its pieces are pointing towards the queen side before trying a queen side uh, attack. And now we start. H5. Always the move. Um, knight f4. Um, pretty standard reaction from um, from from stockfish in, in these positions. I do wonder about it slightly because it, it always seems to uh, attract alpha zero and um, you know to uh, to start moving the king side pawns forward. And uh, yeah, in principle, alpha zero doesn't need that much encouragement to do that. Yeah, I suppose now it's got alpha zero could have g five with tempo and and then get the h pawn going again. That is definitely going to be something that uh, that it considers. And actually, it considers it now g five. And knight e2. Now we've we've seen quite a few games, and it wouldn't have surprised me if Alpha Zero played uh, h4 here, followed by uh, by g4. But it spies here um, um, a slightly different way of uh, of prosecuting the attack, um, and a, a quite shocking one, I have to say. When, when I saw it, I was playing through the games. You know, I sort of uh, ooh, sat up and said, "What on earth is this?" But it's 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 brilliant. Uh, a takes b4, first of all, activating uh, the a file. So that rook is attacking a knight on a4. So that does mean that the queen is, is, is tied away from the king side, you can say, you know, looking at the uh, knight on a4. So if there's an attack happening, the queen will be, um, a little bit embarrassed, maybe. g4, h4, um, just like, uh, uh happened in the game with, uh, um, uh, between uh, Guido Wagenvoorde and uh, Wim van der Weyck that we saw in the previous uh, video. Do take a look at that one if you haven't seen it already. And G3. This is the one. <laughs> so, just like what Wim played. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it, it's, uh, it's beautiful. Now, the, the key point here is that um, F takes G3, of course, would allow Queen takes E3 check with uh, complete carnage. Um, but White, of course, can play Knight takes G3. Um, but the follow-up here now is Knight G4. And um, all of a sudden, this pawn on h4 is uh, is hanging and cannot be defended. And of course, when the queen comes around to h4, well, it's also threatening to come into h2. So all of a sudden, out of nowhere, 
you know, this very, should be a very quiet and uh, and um, sedate um, Carlsbad minority attack position. Black suddenly got a raging attack. And of course, you know, this rook on a7 attacking the knight on a4, it's really, um, um, you know, the queen's defending f2. You know, if, if the queen gets dragged away, this could be very, very dangerous. So Stockfish plays knight b6. And black calmly plays bishop e6. Um, now that gets the knight not attacked anymore and um, and away with, with tempo, you could say, because uh, um, uh, Alpha Zero didn't want to let its uh, light square bishop be exchanged. But of course, this knight is a little bit vulnerable on uh, on, on uh, b6. I mean, it could even be attacked by queen d8. So it's, you know, gradually you have the feeling that white's being, you know, outmaneuvered. However, um, you need to... You know, Stockfish is so good, you really need to outmaneuver it a lot if you're going to uh, to beat it. And in this game, um, Stockfish keeps it all together in uh, in great fashion, actually. Plays f3. Um, important move, I think. Um, you know, this knight on g4 is too strong. It's giving too many uh, tactical opportunities. So, um, um, but here Alpha Zero plays a, a very nice move. Knight h6. And b5, in mean, big crisis now on the queen side. You know, white's got the minority attack in and uh, looking now to break open the queen side. So, you know, what's Alpha Zero going to do here? Well, Alpha Zero, um, was Alpha Zero achieved? It's weakened this whole white king side. The pawn on e3 has been weakened and obviously all the dark squares are weak. So it really wants to bring a knight um, into f5. And uh, how it does it, first of all, it goes bishop uh, f5. Bringing off the active bishop on d3. Exactly, and bringing that knight into play. And um, uh, so now Stockfish crashes through with queen takes c6. And this is crucial. I mean, this is what Natasha said in, in our first video, that if this pawn on c6 goes, then the pawn on d5 goes too. So um, you know, black's really on the edge of defeat, you might think. But, of course, Alpha Zero has um, made sure that it's weakened the white king side. And, well... Stockfish has had its turn on the on the queen side. Now it's Alpha Zero's turn on the king side, um, and this move comes in. Knight takes d4. E takes d4, and Rook a2, and um, there is an enormous threat of Queen f2 check here. So um, in actual fact, there's just one defense. Uh, notice uh, that uh, the knight on g7 is actually performing a sterling job here, defending the rook on e8. Otherwise, that would be uh, rather painful. So white plays rook c2, only move. And actually, now there's uh, nothing better than a, a draw by repetition by queen d4 check, king h1, queen h4, king g1, queen d4, king h1. Um, if white plays um, uh, the move knight h2, then something rather nasty happens. It's, uh, um, I suppose, the, the other bit of, uh, of Black's activity comes uh, comes into play. And uh, we have this move, rookie one check. And after rookie one, queen takes c1, well, white's got to play knight f1, which is obviously not really uh, what white uh, wants to do. So um, the game actually ended in a draw by repetition after queen h4, king g1, queen d4. Um, so, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, I, mean, I hope you enjoyed those games. It just gives us just some more inspiration for you to um, about how to handle this opening. And I think this is what, um, um, for me, this is what Alpha Zero really gives to uh, to this opening. Just um, a, a real example of how to play much more aggressively than you ever dreamed possible. And, um, you know, these kingside attacks, we've seen one with pushing the h-pawn to h4 and then g4. And now we've seen one with g4 to g3. It just shows you how much power and dynamism there is in the black position and that's something i think that uh, that we've barely ever suspected or maybe tartakova had a little suspicion although i'm not too convinced about his way of playing i think i'd uh, if i were you i'd uh, i'd follow alpha zero with the h pawn rather than tartakova with the g pawn but uh, you know anyway i mean i hope you uh, you enjoyed that that little piece of history as well and keep watching we've got lots more videos planned